I am too excited for this. Like, way, way, way too excited. Welcome back to, I believe it's part 9 of Nocturne Rebirth with Pyrotechnic. Alright. There's... I gotta talk to the mage. In the inn. I gotta talk to the dude in the weapon shop. See what they gotta teach me. And then we gotta find a garnet somewhere. Also, what? I'm sure there is. I had to make sure I didn't have anything. Uh, my brain! I guess I really went the wrong way. Yeah, I went the wrong way. Meeny, meeny, money, you. That's not you, it's the other left. You. Somehow I get the feeling that the village's atmosphere has changed. Well, it would be good if it was just my imagination. Uh, let's talk about battles. Wait, whoa. You're a swordsman, so let's talk about swords. Although I can't go too much into detail about them since the main weapon is a spear. But, well, they share some similarities with spears. Swords are mainly classified into three types. There are long swords with high physical attack. Curved swords with high sharpness, critical hit rate, or crook. And short swords with high magical attack. Look at that. The sword that's easiest to handle. Easiest to handle is the long sword. If you're confident in your own skills, then a curved sword is good as well as high critical, which means a high chance of dealing greater damage than normal. If you're mainly using magic skills, then use a short sword would be the one for you. The only thing you would need to take note, though, is that it has a low attack. But you can do a lot of magic, right? Also, you can switch swords in battle, so you have the choice of using different swords in battle depending on the situation. While swords are mainly classified into three types, they can actually be classified in detail into nine types. Besides in the above-mentioned three types, there are also great swords, thin swords, nice swords, divine swords, knives, and magic swords. Swords, light swords, divine swords, knives, and magic swords. Sorry. The following is how I would summarize their abilities. magic swords. They may be strong, but if you're not careful, you may find yourself on the verge of death before knowing it. These unique weapons can't normally be found in shops. Perhaps they can be obtained from treasure chests or from enemies. For example, to make a claymore, you will need a broadsword, a longsword, and a hexagram crest. So in general, to make a weapon, a crest corresponding to that weapon's rank, at least a, re a weapon one rank below or that rank are needed. Of course, if you don't have the above mentioned required items, you won't be able to make a weapon. You find this a little hard to understand? Oh well, I'm sorry for the poor explanation. Ultimately though, practice makes perfect. 
you will understand soon enough, you battles. Okay, so I can craft things as well, but I need the levels, at least, or lower. Corresponding to that weapon's rank, uh, at least a weapon one rank below that rank. Uh, I so we need a crest of a certain level and a weapon that's at least one rank below that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Brain, brain shut down. Oh my god, get me out! Get me out! Oh man. Let me guess, I can do the same thing with the shields, though, right? Oh, battles. Hmm, I get the feeling that you know about battles better than I do. Well, no matter. I'll teach you what I know. What? Thus, those who can perform actions quicker than others will be able to perform as many actions as possible in succession. Imagine how brutal it is for your whole party to be annihilated just because your party is slow. Thus, if you don't want that to happen, be mindful of the speed of your actions. Let me also teach you one more thing as a bonus. A higher tech doesn't just allow a higher chance of doing more damage with one hit. It also allows to get its next turn in battle quicker upon executing at least a smash hit. The damage value is yellow in color, or critical damage value is red in color. And if critical hits are executed on an enemy in succession, there's a chance of instantly killing the enemy without the enemy being able to do anything. So focus not just on strength, but also on tech, in order to exceed in battle. Now that tech also works for enemies, so to counter that, do focus on your evasion as well. Evasion, tech, and strength. Hell yeah. Hell dizzle chisel. Alright, and the mage, and the mage, mage, and the bar. Sigh. So, I suppose it's good to take it easier for once in a while. You want to ask about magic skills? Well, sure. Why not? First of all, magic skills have a total of six elements. They're light, dark, fire, ice, wind, and thunder. Take note that each element differs slightly from each other in terms of traits. The following is a summary of the traits in each element. Light, an element with balanced powers, can be used to cast various unique attacks, fire and element, special and water range attacks, has a very slow spell cast time. Right. An element specialized in close to mid range attack has a very fast, so close to mid range for quick wind is good. An element with high attack shirts can be used to cast various sneak attacks. An ice, an element that lacks in strength but has low MP costs. Mm. An element that specializes in single target attacks and has high accuracy. Interesting, but I do like the wind in the dark. We'll see though. We'll see. We'll see what happens. If this hair don't get out of my face, I'm gonna chop it off. Chop it off. Sorry. It might be good to bear those traits in mind when you have comrades fighting for you. Yeah, why mention comrades, you ask? Well, this will digress from the topic at hand. Do you still wish to listen to it? I mention comrades as there is any, hardly anyone capable of using skills during different elements. Generally, a normal person can use skills of one element, while those who excel in magic can at most use skills of two elements. Those who could use skills of three elements or skills of four or more elements would be considered geniuses and legends, respectively. There isn't anyone notable for using skills of at least three of them, so... Well, that's that. Let's try to do our best out there. So I could possibly... do all four elements. 
There are many different ways for people to use familiars, and there are no hard and fast rules to regard them. The one thing I would like to say, though, is never underestimate weak familiars. After all, weak familiars may not may just contain unique abilities that strong familiars do not have. Thus, it's best to always summon a newly obtained familiar to find out what its abilities are. Also, familiars can gain experience in level up in battle just like you do. Ooh. You could say that their growth rate corresponds to their initial abilities. The strong familiars grow at a fast rate, while the weak familiars grow at a slow rate. And if the two familiars are summoned in battle at the same time, each of the familiars will only gain half the experience that would gain if it was only the familiars summoned in battle. In other words, the overall experience gained by one or two familiars in battle does not change, just that it's split in half for two familiars. Thus, if you wish to focus on training a familiar, it might just be good to summon that familiar in battle. Oh, one more on dungeon strategies. Oh, God. Dungeon strategies, hmm? You're very fucking talkative today. I know, right? I just have a lot of questions. Well, there are many of them, and different situations call for different strategies. I can give you just one advice, though. Unless you have healers, there may be times in battle when you realize you don't have enough herbs and potions. To pull through a battle, it's far important to stock up on herbs and potions that bu than buy weapons and armors. Note that you can only carry a maximum 9 of each consumable island, so it will be no doubt to be good to stock on them. Okay. If not, it's highly recommended that you carry at least 5 herbs and 5 potions. On another note, if you're a pro, you would probably be able to return to a dungeon's entrance even after your whole party is wiped out. In this game, it will not be game over even if your whole party is wiped out in a dungeon. So if I die in a dungeon, it's cool. However, it's a different case if an enemy reveal facing has a clear intent to kill him. Now, what I'm about to say may sound crazy to you, so you may think it's useful. Nevertheless, it'll be boring to level up too much and power your way through dungeons. On the contrary, it'll be more enjoyable to clear the dungeons at a low level. Besides, if you clear a dungeon at a level below the clear brave clear level, who knows what useful item you might just get. So what do you think? Does that change your mind a little? What? If I do a dungeon right now, I get a reward. Oh my god. I guess that'll have to be on next episode. Ah. Sorry for that. That, that was a, definitely a crab episode. You know what? I'm kidding. I'll make it up to you. Because that was mainly just a long tutorial bullcrap. We'll keep going. I don't know if I was clear or not, but I, I obviously went into these games with 
very low expectations, much like Reviel's expectations for Luna. And I'm absolutely blown away and excited. That's why every little thing is like, whoa! Because I just, I didn't expect it. It's definitely very good. Like, this is definitely a boss ass game. Within a dungeon right here. I'm just the lost vampire, you know what I mean? Holy shit. Wow. This is a dungeon right here. Oh Whoa. Alright. Wait, there's an axe I can't use? Okay. Six. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running. Right. Shadow, you better quit being a little wimp. You better toughen up, Shadow. Don't make me revive you. You will never die. Not the bunnies. Oh my god, bunny. Ah, you're rebelling against your own your own kind. They must be very confused. Oh my god. I don't know. I don't know. What up? Holy crap. You better get up, Shadow. So just sitting there all the time. You're always just sitting there. How did you even touch him? Dude? You didn't... He's cheating. So I can't... Ah. That really? Oh my god. Dark Slasher! Dark Slasher! Oh yeah. Well, A, that's why he's not already dead. And B, it's because I think I totally took this move from him. Dark Slasher! I was like, how did he survive two dark slashers? And I'm like, oh, he's of that type. Got it. Oh, not the burden. Oh, crap. Alright, hold on. Uh, ranks. Ranks. I, I call in the onion bed, bro. Get it. Shadow, you're still alive. What are you doing? Come on. You think I'm scared of scorpions? Wait, that's where I came out. I didn't even see it. I wasn't paying attention. Holy shit! I don't know how to handle this situation. Holy. 
dead. He's dead. What? What? Hold on. What? What? Oh my god. That room. <laughs> Some, oh my god, I don't know what to do. Alright guys, thanks for watching another episode of Power Technic Plays. You know I'm gonna make it at home. Yup, you know. In the endless uh, battle to find out how audio works on here on YouTube. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you when I make another one. Uh, like, subscribe, and shoot an arrow at the bell thing I'm about. I don't know.